good evening, everyone, and welcome along to the Plaza Tavern Hotel here in Werribee. Let's hear it! We've got an awesome show lined up for you tonight, and we've got two of the finest from their respective clubs who you'll be meeting in very, very shortly. We just wanted to let you know, for those watching out there in television place, we're uh, basically coming to you from the Plaza Hotel, which is in Werribee. It's about 33 k's out in the western suburbs of Melbourne. And uh, they've been really gracious tonight. They've got a beautiful food, nice staff, nice venue, and everyone's enjoying themselves. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So we're not going to muck around because basically you're only here to see what the players have got to bring to the table. And that's what they're about to do right now. So we're going to get them up here without too much fuss. Let's not muck around and we'll introduce them straight off the top of the table. And we have got some really good uh, entertainment for you this evening and that's what we want you to get involved in. So I want you to give a big warm, of a, a, a big warm applause when the boys do get up here. Our first panellist was born on the 25th of April in 1994. So it's pretty well, it's his birthday two days ago. So, we'll thank him for that. He debuted in round four, 2013 against Adelaide. He stands at 192 centimetres tall, around about six foot three in the old scale. He weighs in at 93 kilos. He plays as a centre half forward with his club. He wears the number nine on his back. He's played 60 games and kicked a total of 116 goals. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Jake Stringer! <laughs> Thank you very much, Sam. Jake Stringer, thanks everybody for welcoming you to the stage. We're going to get straight into our next panellist. It's, uh, again, I want you to give this guy a nice big warm round of applause. Uh, he was born on the 15th of October in 1982. He debuted in round one in 2001 against Essendon. He stands at 197 centimetres tall, about six foot four. He weighs in 101 kilos, get ready to rumble. He plays key forward with his club. He wears the number 20 on his back. He's kicked 303 uh, well, he's actually played 303 games and he's kicked a total of 415 goals. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Drew Petrie. <laughs> Welcome both boys to the stage. This is That's Good for Footy panel show and here they are. Jake, first of all, let's get this one off the top. Congratulations, birthday only two days ago. Yeah, thank you. Anzac Day babies. So, yeah, um, yeah public what? holiday every year. Yeah, fantastic. And what did you do to celebrate it? Uh, absolutely nothing. Oh. I had oh. training in the morning, so I had okay. to go to training, which was a bit boring. And then we had our review, so I had to sit there and... Do that and then went home and watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, but oh, no, not, not even any football. Nah, nothing. Wow, Game of Thrones, there you go. Different kind of birthday. And Drew, wasn't your birthday, but you know, no. how was your uh, long weekend with the Anzac Day? Yeah, um, not too bad. We, yeah, like, uh, like Jake, we train Monday, um, but that's okay. Um, come back from the Gold Coast on Saturday night after a, a good win and uh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was a good one. They've thumped us up there over the last couple of years, so it was good to get one back on them. Beautiful, excellent. Well, this segment uh, that we want to introduce to you tonight is called What's Going On? What's going on? What's going yeah, on? what's going on? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. I tell you what's going Basically, on. Basically, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be asking you guys what your thoughts are on different little subjects, whether they be in football or out of football. And uh, as the, uh, the, the name suggests, what's going on? So I just want to go through a couple of things with you. The first one I wanted to ask you is, how much time do you give to um, speculation and rumour and in, in, innuendo? You know, um, basically the, the subjects or the examples that I wanted to go through was like, you know, uh, Essendon won't win a game this year. Petrarca is going to be the best thing to come out of Melbourne. Um, Frio is zero and five. How much of that does it actually get into your head, and can you control it? And what do you do to sort of override it? What are those? What, what are the things that you, you know, do to get your head around that sort of stuff? I don't really think about all that stuff, so <laughs> yeah. it's pretty simple, yeah. yeah. But I suppose it comes with, you know, different things. You learn different methods over the years and over your time at the footy club and there's enough good people in footy clubs to learn and listen to and 
get all those things out of your head. Yeah, and you, Drew? Yeah, no, there's only a handful of people a footballer needs to listen to, and Jake alluded to it, um, your coach, your teammates, you know, the assistant coaches of the footy club, so they're the ones that give you all the information you need yeah. and fill you in on everything that you need to know, and um, it's very competitive now, the, the, the footy media, and all the journalists have got pretty big egos, and they want to be seen to be breaking the, neck, the, the story, so the story almost becomes about who breaks it first, not the story, so... Um, whenever that's the case, you tend to ignore what they've got to say. And that's really where that question stemmed from because there's so much media hype now around certain things that go on within the football landscape. How do you control it and how do you keep a lid on it? You know, uh, North Melbourne, five and zip, oh, geez, they're going all right. Uh, they're going to be your flag favourites. I mean, you know, yeah. take it easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's round five. So, yeah. you, you know, over the next month, if you drop three or four games, you can fall, fall back into the pack and, um, you know, fall out of the eight quite quickly given how tight the season's going to be. So, um, again, you listen to the coach, your teammates, and, and everyone else can just say what they like and it's good for them to have opinions, but you just ignore it. Yeah, and, and obviously injuries can play a big part. I mean, we look at what Western Bulldogs are going through at the moment. You're looking at Eastern Wood and obviously Bob Murphy and... Uh, then on top of that, you're looking at Johansson. Um, obviously, that hasn't been as bad but uh, as we first thought it was going to be. But then on top of that, you're also looking at other little things that have come along, like Caleb Daniels is having a rest. And now, um, Matty Suckling, you know, so... Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And, um, but, you know, we... I think we played 40 blokes last year through, through our AFL team. So, I think we were the highest team to, you know, play that many numbers through week in, week out. And, you know, we've got a lot of depth and... You know, we'll, we'll just shuffle things around and we'll make sure we have our best 22 ready to go Friday night and every other week. Yeah, good. We'll, we'll allude to all that later uh, when we get to our tipping. Um, I also wanted to find out your thoughts on the, drain, uh, the drawn grand final, the rule that's just uh, obviously been released last, last, what was it, last Tuesday. Yeah. I'm wrapped. Um, yeah. yeah, I couldn't think of anything worse if I was in the grand final and I had to come back the next week, so... Yeah. Yeah, just keep playing until we get a winner. And uh, the rush behind or the, the first score or the goal, any oh. thoughts on that? Oh, I reckon it should be a goal. I don't reckon it should be a point. I reckon it should be a goal. Okay. Yeah, that's just my, my opinion. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I think if you if you make it next score and it's just a point, then it kind of allows a bit of um, mediocrity in the, in the result of, of a grand final, whereas you're challenging the skill of a side to kick a goal to win the game, which would have... Uh, w which would be more fitting, I think. Yeah, well, I heard some uh, strange uh, uh, anomalies come up during the week about, you know, uh, which way would you want to kick, depending on the wind, um, in relation to what if it's a rush behind, you know, or anticlimactic, those sort of thoughts. You have any opinions on that? So it's they're playing two five-minute halves, yeah. don't they? So, yeah, yeah so yeah, I suppose each side gets a go at each way and then... Um what do they do after that? If it's, well, it's still a draw, basically, if it's still a draw, then it goes to a goal. Going. And, uh, you just yeah, keep yeah, going until goal. that goal gets scored. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So as long as well, everyone, the next score, the next score gets scored. After that, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. So so much I've been listening. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it is okay. Yeah, that makes it that makes it interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, now Anzac Day. Obviously, there was well the whole weekend that was associated around Anz the Anzac. Um, the the th your thoughts on the melee rule? You know, like. There was a, what was it, 35 odd thousand dollars was handed out, um, dug into everyone's uh, hip pockets pretty deeply. My thoughts were on, obviously, watching that. I loved, actually, the, the you know, the North, um, the uh, Geelong and the Port Adelaide. No, that was brilliant, you know. Um, but is there a lot of adrenaline that gets associated with that? Or are you going in to fly the flag? What's, when a melee actually takes place, or what's your first thoughts to both of you? What's your first thoughts on when there's a melee going on? Depends how many people um, <laughs> are in there and what mates are in there. If you've got a couple of close mates in there, I might go in there. But, um, yeah, the old fines, they sting your pocket. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. So does that prevent you from going in, the, the, the hip pocket? Are you thinking about that? No, nah, you don't think no, about good, that. No, good, good. No. And Drew? Yeah, you don't think about it at the time, but um, it's, they're pretty harmless. Um, sometimes they're good. Maybe they should put a time limit on them. If they go for longer than two minutes, then fines. But if it's a 30-second... <laughs> I think on uh, Anzac Day there was, um, in the centre, it was at Goddard and Levi Greenwood oh, yeah. and, and Zara Arkus was yeah. in there too and that was over in 20 seconds. So just stand up boys and get on with it yeah. and, and let them go. But if it, if it, if it gets to an all-in sort of stage and it's, 
I think that's probably when you need to throw the fine book at them. But yeah. if it's just a handful of blokes, in, then, then just let it run. Yeah, yeah. A bit different when obviously you're going into a quarter or a half-time break um, because there's nothing that they can really do to prevent that from going on. And then it's, you know, yeah. mm, gets a bit uh, ugly. Uh, or ugly if you don't like it. Um, I wanted to also ask you about the deliberate uh, rule. How, is you, are you finding that confusing at the moment? Or, like, what's your thoughts on that? I actually don't mind the rule. Um, you know, it keeps the game going and and all that type of stuff. There's just a couple of ones that sort of catch your attention a little bit, you know, the ones where you sort of accidentally, you actually don't mean it, and then they ping you, so, yeah. yeah. But in in saying that, I think it's a good rule. Are you Would you be more alluding to the consistency of it? Yeah, I think so. But, yeah. I mean, it's hard for the umpires as yeah. well, because how do you actually know whether, well, some of them stand out, <laughs> but, you know, little miss kicks and stuff like that that go out and you get pinged, you know, they can... They can cost you in the scheme of things. Yeah, yeah. Drew? Yeah, the, yeah it's, uh, it's a good rule. Yeah, well, I agree with Jake on all the things that he said about it. Um, anything to keep the game flowing is going to be a good rule. Yeah. Um, the, the, I think the defenders and the backmen in the competition have had to adjust how they play now because the, the, the boundary line used to be one of your best friends. You use the boundary line as almost a teammate a lot of the time, and, uh, but now they can't. They're, you, so you have to find ways to um, break tackles a bit more and you've got to train that a bit more to... If you're about to get tackled over the line, you've got to try and fight your way back in. But if you fight your way back in, you can get pinged for holding the ball. So you've got to f find ways to fend off a guy and, and just quick kicks down the line. Therefore, you know, the forwards probably have to be up the ground a bit more today. So there's a bit of a flow-on effect as to how you play the game, given that one small rule change. Yeah, cool. Uh, and whilst we're on the, the flow of the game, obviously the interchange rules played a big part already this year. You know, with the obviously it's reduced, so... Yeah, it's... Uh the first four weeks I was battling with it. Um, <laughs> you, know, you don't get a spell every now and again. But, um, no, it's good. I think it's good because um, I don't think they should drop it any lower, that's yeah. for sure. But um, I think it's at a good stage now where I'm probably getting close to the same, if not a little bit more rest, because you actually have to spend a certain amount yeah. of time off instead of you come off for 30 seconds and then you're straight back on. So in that way, I think it's it's actually not too bad for the players. Yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, instead of getting you know three or four ninety-second blocks, two-minute blocks, you're probably just getting one six or six to eight-minute block of, um, of of rest. And rest, yeah. do you get what do you get one a week or do you get two or? Yeah, I get one probably one a quarter. Yeah, do you? Right. That's yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, that's all right. I'm getting one a game at the moment. Generally in the third quarter. So okay. Oh. Right. Make note that's of that. That's all right. I find uh, moments in the quarters where I have to have a little spell on the ground. So. Yeah, right. Uh, last, last one that I wanted to go to. How do you feel about presidents having their say in a public forum? <clears throat> um, Pass yeah, it's a bit hard. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit hard. I mean, obviously Eddie was hosting the footy show when he was president, so yeah. it's you know it's a balancing act, and JB for us as well, and. Yeah. Um, Gordon, what's his, Gordon. his Peter name? Gordon. Peter Gordon, couldn't think of his name. Yeah. He's, um, it's interesting actually with him because his company is representing a lot of the Essendon blokes, isn't he? Yeah, so, yeah, so I that's think kind so. Of, he's so got to put his head out there yeah. and pump up his business a bit, so it's a bit of a funny one. Mm, interesting. Well, there you go. That's what the boys have got to say with what's going on. Give them a round of applause, please. Move on uh, now. We're going to talk about the chipping. Which uh, is this let's weekend. get ready to rumble. All right, it is going to be. Let's, let's get ready to rumble, and it's going to kick off Friday night. But we're not going to talk about that game just yet. We're going to save that for the end. We're going to go to the uh, game on Saturday, and we're basically going to uh, talk about the Melbourne and St Kilda. So let's hear the Melbourne song. It's a grand old flag. It's a high flying flag. It's the emblem for me and for you. It's the emblem of the team we love. There you go. All right, that'll do. Thanks, Sam. And uh, they're playing St Kilda. Let's hear that song. Oh, when the Saints go marching in. Oh, when the Saints go marching in. All right, thank you, Sam. Uh, Eddie had 145 on Saturday afternoon, Melbourne versus St Kilda. Boys, what are your thoughts? Melbourne coming off a win, St Kilda coming off a loss. Yeah, I th I th I'm going to go with Melbourne. And I think okay. um, Petraka's playing his first game, so... Yes, yeah, yeah, just him. announced tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Melbourne as well. Um, they've been playing some, some very good footy. They uh, were great against us a couple of weeks ago. Um, they were great on the weekend. Um, just 
their contested stuff's been really good. Vince has been very good um, yeah. in the middle. Tumpus um, and um, Jack Watts is playing some good footy as well. So Melbourne, I think at the start of the year, everyone probably thought, oh, not sure how they're going to go. Maybe they're not going to go that well, but yeah. they're flying at the moment, so I think they'll win. Yeah, good, good. Okay. Um, we're heading over to Adelaide at 1.40, and uh, that's Adelaide versus Frio. Let's hear from Adelaide. We're the pride of South Australia. We're the mighty... Yep, that'll do. Thanks, Sam. Um, and they're versus Frio. Everyone wake up for this one. Thanks, Sam. Adelaide versus Frio. Adelaide, I mean, they're looking the guns this year, but uh, Frio, what a what a fall away they've had. Yeah, they have, and with uh, Fifey out, um, yeah, I can't see him getting near Adelaide. Mm. No. Sandy Lance yeah. Fife. They've got a f- Michael Johnson maybe as well might yeah. be out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're struggling for a key defender. Yeah. Um, and the yeah, Adelaide, we were lucky enough to beat them round one which was a good win, which is looking like an even better win now because ever yeah. since then, they've just been killing it. So yeah, Adelaide exactly. will win this one. And being that it's at Adelaide Oval, which is, you know, they call it the cauldron, um, basically uh, it's like having a 19th man in your team playing there. So we've yeah. heard. Um, yeah. So that, that being the circumstance, they're going to be up against yeah, it. Yeah, it's a brilliant yeah. atmosphere. I think um, Adelaide always had good crowds whenever they were playing. Port Adelaide struggled. But to get full um, stadiums um, yeah. at Adelaide Oval there. It's a yeah. great atmosphere to play. Beautiful. Um, Hawthorne versus GWS at Spotless Stadium 4.35 on Saturday as well. Let's hear from GWS. That's got to be one of the best songs in the AFL, you'd have to agree, yes? I'm pretty sure they got that song from this. Would that be correct? You guys would be old enough to remember that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, I, oh, should I, should I, I'm older than him, but should I be <laughs> old enough to remember that song? 1980, Moscow, Olympics. Oh, no, it was yeah, two no. years. Yeah. I was just nah, the twinkling in the so. old man's eye, I think, back then. <laughs> anyway, uh, GWS versus Hawthorne. Let's hear the Hawthorne song. We're a happy team at Hawthorne. I don't think anyone here really wants to hear that. Um, I don't think anyone really gives a shit, to be honest. Um, but GWS versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne, I mean, three from three. Three points for three games. Um, luckily, they've got the umpires on the side. I didn't say that. Um, but that's what's happening at the moment with their three points winning the last three games. Going up against GWS, your thoughts, boys? I'm going to go for an upset and say that the Giants are going to beat the Hawks. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Hawthorne, yeah, like I said, have had some narrow wins, so not hitting their straps as yet, still yep. early in the season. And the Giants looking pretty good. Did they thump, was that put out, was that last week? Uh, oh, they beat, um, who did they beat last week, GWS? Uh, G- Saints. Adelaide. Saints. No? St. Kilda, yeah, week, yeah, yeah. They yeah. thumped Port Adelaide a fortnight earlier, so. Yeah, yeah. Looking the good, so I'm, I'm with Jake, GWS. And, um, um, Cameron back as well, yeah. obviously. Um, came back and kicked a nice little bag full. Kicked so, four, yeah. Yep. yeah, looking good. Uh, so that's at Spotless Stadium. We're going to head down to the MCG. <laughs> well, Richmond versus Port Adelaide. Let's see from Richmond. Away from Tigerland. A fighting fury, we're from Tigerland. That'll do on that one. And they're versus Port Adelaide. we got the power to win. Power to roll. Thanks very much, Sam. Richmond versus Port Adelaide, MCG, 7.25 on Saturday night. What are your thoughts here, boys? Yeah, wow. Yeah, um, wow. I agree, it's hard to pick, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to go with Port Adelaide just because oh. Rance got, okay. got suspended. Okay, and yes. That's a, yeah, it's a mm. massive, massive loss. Just before you go there, Drew, what were your yep. thoughts on that one? I know Rance, he was so dark on himself, obviously, yeah. you know, came out and called his own media conference just to say... I can't believe I did that. And it looked like it was a complete, you know, we'd call it a mind, <coughs> but it was a b- complete brain fade, yeah. you know, and uh, totally out of character. It was out of character. I've um, played on Alex probably, well, every time we play him for the last eight or nine years, and I'm not sure, does he play on you, Jake? When yeah, yeah, he comes to me every now and again. Yep, so, and I've never known for him to do anything like that. Yeah. Um, he's, he's tough, he's competitive, he takes the footy really hard, so certainly out of character, so I wouldn't... Uh, judge him on that on that one act. Um, no, yeah, it's going to be difficult for who's going to take uh, D 
Dixon, big Charlie Dixon mm. um, this week. Maybe Chaplin has to, someone else. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think Port Adelaide will win. Yeah, and them travelling over the G? Uh, you yeah, know? Uh. I don't know. I think, uh, g- given their form of late, often the, the coaches like to use away trips as, you know, galvanise a group, get the boys together. It's great that we're travelling as a tight-knit unit. Um, so try and pump up the group and, and use, yeah. as you know, you're, you're flying into enemy territory and yeah, trying yeah. to s- stimulate the boys that way. So I reckon they might use that, a well, bit of that this week and we might see it out on the ground as well. Yeah, well, if any two clubs need galvanising, it's these two. Um, heading down to Skilled Stadium, Geelong versus Gold Coast. Let's hear Geelong. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. We are yeah, Geelong. Boo, 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 boo. This is a Western Bulldogs and a, and a North Melbourne night. So, um, Gold Coast. Let's hear that. We are the sons of the Gold Coast sky Where the team who never say die All right, all right, you've said die. Um, so, Geelong versus Gold Coast at, at Skilled Stadium. I mean, Geelong at home. So, thoughts there? Yeah, I'd have to go Geelong. And, you know, the way Paddy Dangerfield and Joel Sold and that are going about it, I just think their midfield's just going to overrun them. Even though Aaron Hall and... Um, Gary Ablett to flying, yeah. but Geelong too strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two blokes had a lot of it last week for the Gold Coast, uh, Hall and Ablett. Um, Tom Lynch, he's an absolute superstar for yep. Gold Coast. Love watching him play, marking the footy, kicking goals. Yeah. Still, think he's still leading the Coleman at the moment, so he's going to be an absolute superstar. But uh, Geelong will win. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Sunday, May the 1st, we're uh, under the Gabba. Brisbane versus Sydney. Let's hear Brisbane. We are the pride of Brisbane town We wear the roll Blue and gold uh, That'll do, that went down we like a Stephen May hit And uh, over to Sydney Let's hear this thing, Tom Cheer, cheer the red and the white Honour the name by day and by night Alright, thanks Sam Boys, Gabba, 1.10pm, Sunday what Yeah, are your thoughts? Sydney you to be too strong Yeah Yeah, that's just Yeah, yeah. unanimous Comfortable for Sydney, I think. Um, yep. Brisbane like to run. They use Zorko, Taylor, Green off half back, or their half forwards get really high up the ground. They like to charge back through and try and score that way. So Sydney can stop that, which I think they will. They'll win easy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, MCG on uh, on Sunday at 3.20, uh, Kelton versus Essendon. Let's hear Kelton. We are the Navy Blues. We are the oh, yeah, old All right. And uh, let's hear from the Bombers. Oh, Bombers border. We we'll let him in. Up, up to win the okay, British that'll do. Ship. Thanks, Sam. So, Kelton v Essendon. Kelton coming off a win. I didn't think I'd be saying that. Um, and Essendon, well, you know. Yeah, I, Kelton actually have a pretty good list. And um, I actually think they're going to go okay this year. And yep. I'm tipping them to win. Okay. All right. Drew? Yeah, yeah, Kelton as well. Um, Bit of rivalry between these two sides over yeah, the years, yeah. but um, yeah, Carlton's just uh, too good, strong. Good, yeah, too strong. Yeah. Um, Essendon, I, I thought last week Essendon was. Well, I thought we might have seen a few more of those margins in the yeah. game so far this year, but we haven't yet, which is a credit to the Bombers. But yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit of credit where yeah. it's true. Uh, last game for the round before we get to the big one, of course, um, on Sunday, Domain Stadium, West Coast versus Collingwood. Let's hear from West Coast. Yep, that'll do. All right, wait, well done, well done. Um, West Coast versus Collingwood. It's over in the West. Oh, well, sorry, come on. Um, basically, your thoughts pretty well straightforward on where you think. Yeah, West, West Coast. Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, West Coast at home. Yeah. yeah. Pretty straightforward. Collingwood played out of their out of their pants last week. Um, yeah. Did so you think they were lucky to get away with the winners? You wouldn't West be suggesting Collingwood. that. No, well, they, no. they played well, but yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I reckon West Coast. They had a, got hiding to Sydney last week yeah. at the SCG, so I reckon they'll... How's the hype yeah. around Big Cox all the way from America? Wow, all right, kick first goal, yeah. you know, first game. Yeah. Everyone's like... Yeah, now, well. They sh- well, I mean, it's good. I'm yeah. not suggesting it's not, but um, <laughs> it's uh, the hype. It's uh, fantastic. They're doing news segments on it and getting all these gun recruits that yeah. are um, coming out of the... I was watching him on the, you know, the news the other night and, and trying to kick a football and it was like, oh, wow, all right. Okay, good luck with that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's about it for that game then. We'll move straight along. Let's get into the big one. Friday night at Eddie Head. Yeah, all right. 
We've got two teams, first versus second, North coming five and zip, Western Bulldogs four and one, Eddie Head Stadium. Let's hear from the North Melbourne theme song. Sing it if you want. So join in the chorus and sing it one and all. Join in the chorus, North Melbourne's on the ball. Good old North Melbourne, the champions you'll agree. North Melbourne is the team that plays to win for you and me. Beautiful, thanks Sam, so there you go. And now, let's hear the Western Bulldogs. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you for everyone getting involved in that one. All right. Thanks Thanks to you guys. That's what we need. So we're going to go to you first, Drew. We'd yep. like you to tell all the, all the supporters here and the fans at home yep. uh, why do you think North Melbourne can win and yeah. how and why? Well, without giving too, too many secrets, secrets away, away. Yeah, you never know who's listening. Um, the, um, I think with all our games so far this year, we've been... Uh, Pretty inconsistent throughout games that managed to win. So I think we've we haven't played the perfect four quarter game yet, but we've been able to uh, just to hang in there, I guess, and tough out wins. So I reckon we're going to need that against uh, Jake's team on Friday night. Yep. Okay. All right. And Jake, over to you, please. The floor is yours. Yeah. Well, obviously North are five and zero and haven't lost a game. So um, it's obviously going to be tough for our boys. But um, you know we like Eddie Ad. It's nice and quick for us. And yep. um, yeah, we'll be looking to use that speed and. Get the ball rolling. Yeah, right. The doggies, yeah, the doggies have been good this year. They've uh, been able to score, and I, I noticed just on the um, points for and against. So this year, North Melbourne, we've had 493 points kicked against us, and the doggies have only had 283 points against. Oh, yeah. So that's a 210 point difference across five games that um, in, in in scoring against. So we're going to have to. Uh, they're good at restricting side scoring. I think you kept free out of 38 points and. A couple of seams to 10 goals, so that's yeah, so kept, a good thing. Yeah, kept a couple under 50 points, and so that always helps, but, yeah, it's a big score. Beautiful. Well, there you go. You've heard the tips from the boys. If you're a betting man or a betting girl, get your chips on because these boys have just given it to you now. Good luck to both teams on Friday night, and may the best team win. Congratulations. Give them a round of applause, everyone. Alright, this is a segment that we like to call Simply the Best. You're simply the best. Than all the rest. I'll just get you to grab that microphone there, mate. Obviously, uh, just around there. Beautiful. Well done. There you go, mate. Welcome up to the stage. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I want you to be as quick and uh, as prompt as you can to get straight to the answer as, you, as, as quickly as possible. And we're going to start with your questions right now. Are you ready to go, Gary? Yeah, mate. Here we go. How many premierships has your team won? One. There you go. How many times has your team played in a losing grand final? Uh, Quick. Three. No, once. Four. Who is your team's captain? Murph. Correct. Who wears the number nine at your club? This bloke here behind me. Right on. How many members does your club currently have or closest to and will take within a thousand? Uh, 35. 32, 658. Mm. Sorry, mate. Where did your team finish last year on the ladder at the end of the home and away season? What was that? Where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home and away season last year? Uh, six. Correct. How many games did your team win last year at the end of the, end of the home and away season? Shh. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, quick, quick. Oh, I don't know. 18. No, 14. We're there. All right. When did your team last win a grand final and who did they play against? Uh, 54. And? 
Uh, Melbourne. All right, correct. How many points did you win that game by? Shh. Fifty-two points. Oh, fifty-one. Bad <laughs> luck, mate. Name three coaches over the last 20 years. That's three coaches over the last 20 years. Uh, uh, Rocket, uh, Bevo yep. and um, Mecca. All right. Excellent. What do you end up with? Six. Congratulations. All right, Gary. Now it's over to you, the North Melbourne man. Let's see what you can do with this, Wayne. You're going to get the same ten questions and we're going to see how you go. All right. How many premierships has your team won? Four. Excellent, correct. How many, teams, uh, how many times has your team played in a losing grand final? This is about nine or ten. ten. Five, uh, so that's incorrect. Who is your team's captain? Brad Scott. Captain. No, captain. Oh, captain. Oh, first team. Bum, bum. Who wears the number nine at your club? Make it up here. Swallow. Yep, that'll do. Um, how many members does your club currently have or closest to within a thousand? 41,000. We'll take that because it's 40,012. Um, question number six. Where did your team finish on the ladder at the end Eight. of the home and away season last year? Eight. Correct. Question number seven. How many games did your team win last year at the end of the home and away season? Thirteen. All right. Correct. Number eight. What year did your team last win a grand final and 99. who did they play? 99. Against Carlton. Yeah, correct. Number nine. How many points did you win that game by? Incorrect, 35. Scores are level. Question number 10, name three coaches over the last 10 years. Brad Scott, Dennis Pagan, and... Quick, quick. Buzz it out. Mm. All right, we have a, we're locked on six apiece, so we're going to go to a tiebreaker. I'll ask you the, the question first, um, Wayne, and that question is... How many times has your club won the wooden spoon? No, 13. Back over to you, Gary. This is for the win. All right. The question being, how many times has your club won the wooden spoon? A whole heap. Is that your answer? Because that's not what I have written here. Uh, four. Mm. All right. Now, we've still got a tiebreaker, so what we're going to get you to do is just put the microphone back up on the desk there. Do you guys know how to play rock, paper, scissor? All right. That's how we're going to decide this. So, basically, we're going to call it, okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. There we go. Right on. Simply the best. Let's hear it. Well done, Gary. There's your prize pack. 300 bucks worth of prizes. And Drew's going to hand you. Drew, if you could look after the, um, the runner-up pack down there. There you go. Don't forget your pack, Wayne. Anyway, this is a segment that we call Get Smart. Too easy. Chris, can I get you to stand up and uh, Michael, can I get you to move in? Face towards the cameras because you're on TV. Come in nice and close if you could, Chris. Back in over this way. That's it. All right. Uh, get your boys to test your buzzers. Drew. All right. And a horse. All right. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? All right. What we're going to do here is we're going to ask the boys a series of questions till we get a resulting answer. Um, basically, what we're looking for is the first one to five. I want you two boys just to flip it over each time that these boys get something right. All right. So let's go. Who played Charlene in Neighbours? <laughs> Drew? Kylie Minogue. Beautiful. Too easy. What movie based in the early... So just turn that over. He's got one. Beautiful. Turn that around so everyone can see that, Chris. Uh, no, one. Yeah. Beautiful. That's it. Collingwood supporter, was that what you said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Drew said that, Chris, not me. All right. Uh, what movie based in the early 1900s stars... Tim Robbins as a prisoner wishing to escape for a crime he did not do. No help, please. I've heard, yeah. I, can't, I, did hear. Yeah, I, did right. hear, I did hear the answer, so I can't. I won't. Okay. I won't. All right. It. Well, we'll pass on it that was one then. To me. 
Thank you very much. These characters come from which TV show? Vince, Ari, Johnny. <laughs> True. Mind blanks. I pressed the button. It's um. Oh. It is. I know. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pass. Mm. Out. Entourage. All right. What famous rock and roll band have these names in the band? The Edge, Larry Mullins, Adam Clayton, and Bono. Do you guys listen to music or? No? No idea? You too. I didn't, did you say Bono, did you? Yeah. Oh, I, didn't hear say, I didn't hear you say Bono. Yeah, no. sorry. At the end. Yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't right. Bono. In which capital city would you find the famous landmark known as the Coat Hanger? Uh, <laughs> true. I had a bit of crowd assistance. The Coat Hanger is obviously the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Yes. Yeah, so Correct. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to give you that one. So you got two. Yep. It, this is for you, Jake. Okay. <laughs> if you sold a cow and grew a beanstalk, what would your name be? <laughs> Jake. Jack and the Beanstalk? Yeah! All right! <laughs> what was previously known as New Holland? I'll give you a hint. It's uh, a big continent and it's somewhere very close to where we are right Australia? now. Yeah! All right! Beautiful! <laughs> wow. All right. What, what have we got there as a score? Two and two. All right. Turn around and face that way because we can see what you look like. It's everyone out there that wants to. All right. What is Australia's largest inland city? <coughs> oh, yeah. Go, Jakey. Perth? No. Largest <coughs> inland city. Do you want to have a go, Drew? Yeah. I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's in Queensland, but I'm just going to say Bendigo. Uh, no. <coughs> Canberra. Oh, Canberra. Yeah. All right. Canberra doesn't count, though, does it? Oh. What's in Canberra? We don't, we, don't, we don't go into Canberra, so yeah, no, it doesn't. What Aboriginal term for a watering hole is also known? Oh. Billabong. Hey, Jakey. All right. Three plays two. Name four members of the Beatles. Love me, do. No takers? No? No? Who's down there? Harry Styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, John Lennon, and Paul McCartney. Let's go with something you might know. I know that you like your foxtail, Jakey, so name me any three of the Kardashian sisters. Chloe? Ooh. Kim? Ooh. Courtney? <laughs> Four plays two. This could be a, a knockout. Here we yeah, go. baby. <laughs> name me three of the actors, and I'm looking for their real names, not their character names. Name me three of the actors from Friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Can I have well, a go, Drew? Gen Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, that's one. one. Another two, please. Yeah, I heard Co Courtney Cox, so I'm, right. I'm cheating there, but I'll take that. I'm, I need some help. I'm behind. And tick, what's tick, the tick, other, tick, tick, the tick. lady? Uh, nah, yeah. nah, got to buzz you out there. Sorry, mate. All right, uh, name me four of the seven dwarves. Four. Oh, Drew. I think it was no, Jake. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Dopey, grumpy. Uh, Dopey, sleepy, grumpy, sleepy. Yeah, one more. Happy. Yeah! And the score is five. We have a winner, Jake Stringer. Congratulations. There's yours. Congratulations on that one, Michael. All right, we've got another segment now that we like to call What Can I Say? Oh, 
uh, this is pretty simple. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the boys a series of questions, and those questions only need either a one-word answer or a couple of words answers, depending on how they want to give it. So we're going to kick it off with Jake Stringer. Okay, you're going to be first. Jake Stringer would like to... Be in the NBA. Ah, be, be in the NBA. You're a big fan of the basketball? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, right. Okay, who's your team? Uh, the Cavs, but before LeBron went there, so... Oh. Okay, all right, all right. I grew up with Matthew Dolliver Dover, so... Of course you did, yes, yes, yeah. Um, Drew Petrie would yeah. like, uh, will play. Thank you. Great answer. Yeah, uh, we'll play. <laughs> we'll play. Uh, on, yeah, on Friday night. Yeah. Oh, that'll, that'll do. You heard it here first. Yeah. That's a scoop. Uh, ooh, that one. Yeah. Right. The AFL should. This is for both of you. Jake, you can go first. Make the preseason shorter. Oh, okay. All right, Drew. Yeah, re reduce ticket prices. Oh. Everyone's on board with that one. Again, this is for, for both of you. A night grand final is? I'm going to go with a must. A must? Okay. Yep. Drew? Is going to happen within the next five years. Wow. Okay. Bulldogs will finish. This is for you, Jake, obviously. Top four, hopefully. Top four. All right. Yep. Drew, over to you. Same yeah, question. Yes. North Melbourne will finish. Top four. Top, Top four. four. All right. <laughs> this is for both of you. I wish that. I had a, d a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, good answer. Yeah. Drew, I wish that. I, I wish that I had a premiership medal. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, my favourite time is spent. Playing football. Okay. My favourite yep. time is spent. Is, uh, drinking beer. Drinking yeah. beer, yeah. Uh, yeah. At home with my family. Beautiful. All right. Playing interstate is? Horrendous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Bloody oath it is. It's great being away from my family. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Double entendre. Um, if I could, I would. Yeah. If I could, I would be able to fly. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. All right. Yeah. I'll, okay. I like the being invisible from the crowd somewhere. That'd be good. Yeah, being invisible. Yeah, Have I could some go fun with, that. with that. All right. Um, we're going to go to the coach is a ripper. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, Two. He's a twin. <laughs> okay. All right. And the last one out of this segment, Good Friday football is? North Melbourne versus Western Bulldogs. Yeah. Yep. Did you too, Drew? Agree. Yep. Agree. There you go. All right. Well, there you go. That's what the boys have had to uh, basically say. Pretty simple. Basically, what we're going to do, this is a segment that we call Under Pressure. Under Pressure. This is basically the way that this segment works. We just want to go into the boys uh, in a little bit in depth, go behind the scenes, try and find out a little bit more about them. Um, so the questions that we're going to ask are uh, related in that, that respect. Um, I'll ask, start with you, um, if you don't mind, Jake. What song gets you pumped? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to need audio for that. Future. Have you ever heard of Future? Um, not until you Low tell life. me. Low Life. Okay. That, that song gets me going. All right. Well, I don't think we've got that in our sound, sound list over there. That's but I said it. Yeah, okay. Future. All right. And well, then okay. Drew? Um, I'm, not a, I'm a bit of a flicker on the radio, but years ago Adam Simpson used to make a mix, who, co who coached the Eagles now. Um, Scissor Sisters, they play some <laughs> all right tunes. <laughs> and no, it's not a children's band, okay? It's... Uh, <laughs> Check them out. Okay. Uh, what's your favourite favourite kind of car? Lamborghini. Okay. Mm. Lambo. Colour? Black. Black. Yeah. Black Lambo. All right, Drew? Yeah, Mazda. Yeah. Mazda, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> if, only, if only mission made cars. Um, are you a better swimmer or a runner? Horrible at both. <laughs> Horrible at both. True? Uh, I, I'm not a bad runner. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, who is your favourite muso or lead singer? I'll go with Future once again. All right. Yeah. Too easy? True? Um, yeah, not a big muso, as you found out before. Um, hear the Beatles, no. Jeez. Um, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Okay. Yeah, Bjorn. Yeah, man. very versatile, that man. Um, what I'd like to know is who would you most want to have the ball after the siren was blown to kick? I'd like to have it myself. Right. That'd be Good. pretty nice. Can't get a better answer than that. Yeah. yeah. True? Like, yeah, Brent Harvey, he doesn't miss. Doesn't yeah. Miss. Dead eye dick. Yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what do you do to relax and unwind? Sit at home and watch Paw Patrol with my little daughter. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Paw Patrol. Okay, beautiful. Nice, nice way to relax. Drew? Yeah. Um, watch go to the, Frank go to the park. No, not watch Frank. Watch no. um, Lion Guard. Is that on as well? That's a kid's show with me kids. Uh, okay. Or kick the footy out the front or push them on the swing, that sort of stuff. Something along yeah, those lines. Yeah. I asked you who you'd uh, want to have the ball after the final siren was kicked. Who would you not want to have? the ball after the final siren was kicked? Dale Morris. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have him having a shot for the, for the win. Nah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any, any, any backman? Um, Luke McDonald. Yeah, okay. For All us, right. young Luke. Who's the, steni who's the st uh, stingiest penny pitcher at the club? Nathan Robert. Okay. Any yeah. any reason why? He's just a little ferret, so <laughs> <laughs> there's not much else to it. Okay. True. Uh, there's a, well, we've got a couple actually. Yeah. Sean Atley, I found out last week. He nicked nicked about four towels from the hotel we stayed at up at the Gold Coast yeah, really? for his own closet at home. So I'm going to say Sean Atley. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go with that one. Uh, what's the best ever prank you've heard played at your club? Barry Hall. Apparently one day, took the boxing ring down, put a bloke's car in the boxing ring, and then put the ropes back up. <laughs> so I don't know around how he car. did it. Yep, in the, the oh, in the middle of the boxing ring. I suppose no one was going to argue with him nah. either, were they? Yeah. Nah. Wow. All right. What about you, Drew? Oh, a few blokes have put um, advertisements in you know, the classified section of well, on Gumtree. Um, We've got our, our fitness guy has horses, and so they've put his horses for sale in the paper, and he's been getting phone calls about I want to buy your horses, and <laughs> the boys stitched him up like that. Yeah, right. Okay, bit different. Um, last one that we'll go with with tonight: Who would be the most intellectual at the club, or who thinks that they are? Will Minson by far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't see that coming. Um, probably a local, Benny Brown, who. Uh, Cut his teeth down here at Werribee for a year before joining us. He's a, a smart man. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right. All right. Well, there you go. That was our segment called Under Pressure. That's good for footy. That's good for footy. I just wanted to allude very quickly. We've got a competition running this year. We've got a very generous support. Um, from a company called The Big Picture People. Uh, they're located down the road here in Hoppers Crossing, down that way. And uh, they've been generous to come to the party this year and given us $11,000 home theatre surround sound package. <laughs> Huge. All you've got to do for the people that are here tonight, take home one of those booklets and enter that way or get onto the website and find out. For the people that are watching at home, here's how you enter. Yes, thanks to the big picture people, we have the chance to win a home cinema sports pack valued at over $11,000. You can enjoy big sports, movies, concerts and even video games on a big three metre screen with thunderous surround sound. This home cinema pack is courtesy of the big picture people. To enter, simply log on to bigpicturepeople.com.au forward slash good for footy. Terms and conditions are on the page. Good luck to everyone and thanks to the big picture people, the experts in home cinema. What I now want to talk to you about is these shows. These shows are done every Wednesday night. They're live from venues all around Melbourne. 
They're obviously then broadcast every Thursday night on C31 and also around the, the, the globe the globe through YouTube TV as well as through Foxtel. Um, every Wednesday night, we're live from venues all across Melbourne, as I said. If you want to be part of the fun, all you've got to do is get in contact with the venue directly or get onto Ticketek. Coming up next week, we're at the Hawthorne Hotel in Hawthorne. We've got Jared Ruffhead and Jordan Lewis on the show. You can say something. All right, that'll do. That's something. Uh, on May the 11th, we've got Melbourne players Jack Watts and Nathan Jones. All right, now you're getting more vocal. You're getting the idea now. On May the 18th, we'll be down at the Barwon Club Hotel where we'll have players from the Geelong Football Club. <laughs> on May the 25th, we're at the Mulgrave Country Club in Wheelers Hill with um, Richmond players Dustin Martin and Trent Cochin. All right? So my point being to you is if, if you don't follow those teams, tell your friends and then they can come. And they can hang shit on us as well. So for all information about the shows, get on to thatsgoodforfooty.com.au. Very simple. Either do that or go through to Facebook. Follow us on That's Good For Footy at uh, Facebook. Uh, if, you, if you've enjoyed the show and you want to come to more, get on to Ticker Tech. Tell your friends. Get everyone to come along to them. We love doing them. We love being here with you guys. We hope you all had a good time. Have you? It's pretty simple. Go over and see Sandy at the end of the show. Tell her what you thought about the show. We'll broadcast that stuff all around Australia. I just want you to put a warm round of applause together for these two guys and wish them the best for Friday night. Drew Petrie from the Kangaroos. And Jake Stringer from the Western Bulldogs. There you go. Thank you very much, everybody. My name's Damien. Have a bloody good night. Go over and see Sandy on the way out. This has been That's Good for Footy Panel Shows. Cheers, everyone. Bye. At the Plaza Tavern in Werribee. Now we're just going to ask people what they thought of the show. Hi, Jake. Welcome to the show. It's your second time here. What do you think tonight? Yeah, it was a great night. Obviously down here with Drew Petrie, so looking forward to doing battle on Friday night. But it was good to come down here and have a few laughs. Would you describe the show to your friends? Oh, just fantastic. Um, I had a whale of a time with friends, catching up with footy players. It's been good, good night. So this is your first time at the show, and you told me before that you watch it every single week. What's it like coming to a live show? Oh, it's just wonderful. You get uh, photos with the players, you get to talk to them. It's just wonderful. We love doing this show for the fans. We bring it to them. And this is not your typical footy panel show. What do you think? No, it is a bit different. Uh, some of the questions are a bit, a bit harder. The non-footy questions are harder than the actual football questions. Yeah, that's right. Every single week, spot on the dot. Uh, tune in. Doesn't matter who's on. You've got to tune in. Laid back. A lot of good talk going on and uh, a bit of a laugh. This is our first time and uh, we've got a bunch of us together for the night and we worked out to be really great. Um, we had a laugh, had a ball. And it was great to meet both players. Unfortunately, we're all Bulldog supporters here. And come out with the night with a great hamper. You've been watching That's Good For Footy! 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 So there you have it, they've had their say and now I'm going to have mine! You've been watching That's Good For Footy panel shows! My name is Sandy, thank you and good night! Want more information about the shows? Then log on to the That's Good For Footy website at www.thatsgoodforfooty.com.au. Here you'll find venue dates and lineup, photo gallery, register to win section, competitions, ticket sales and heaps more. 